Okay, well, welcome back, friends, to the St. Paul Handicapable Ministry YouTube service on April the 28th, 2021. So good to see you again. Our ministry's been in operation since October of 1997, and since uh, September the 23rd, we've been doing YouTube services. So thank you for being with us. One of the things that we love to do is we love to sing. Now, we got a trio of songs, three songs. I know that you know them well. I am the church, this little light of mine, and do, Lord. Let's sing along and have a lot of fun doing it. Here we go. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages too, from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And when the people gather, there's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. I count if I am ninety, or nine, or just a baby. There's one thing I am sure about, and I don't mean maybe. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, Yes, we're the church together. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Way beyond the blue. Bum, 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 bum. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me, way beyond the blue. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. Way beyond the blue, bum, 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 bum. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Way beyond the blue. Ah, you sounded better than ever. Now, one of the things we've been trying to remember because we did it every time we would meet in person was that 
God loves us and Jesus loves us all the time. There's never a time when he does not love us. Gail is the one who brought us this riddle. Let's sing along. You know it. Every second of every minute, every minute of every hour, every hour of every day, every day of every week, every week of every month, every month of every year. He loves us throughout eternity, and I pray I've made myself quite clear. Now, I told you last week that starting this week, starting tonight, we were actually going to be doing a book review like an audio book. I'm going to take you chapter through chapter of all the 33 chapters that tell us the handicapable story. And chapter one is initial introductions. Pay attention, and I hope that you'll learn something, and I hope you'll be back for the next ones going forward. Here we go. My handicapable story begins in the early 1980s at a rural Baptist church in Mississippi where I was attending a Sunday worship service. Attending such a church in Mississippi is quite an extraordinary experience. The people are friendly, wear winning smiles, and easily extend a welcoming hand for a firm handshake. One of the people to extend such a hand was a young man in his late 20s wearing a smile that any Southern politician would love to own. He was filled with joy and made everyone feel welcome, especially me. As I inquired further about my newfound friend, I discovered he was autistic. This was my first experience at the age of 37 to meet an autistic person. I thought to myself, this young man is a unique individual who has such a sense of joy and friendliness about himself. Little did I know at the time this would be a prelude for what was to come 13 years later at a church called St. Paul United Methodist Church in Largo, Florida. I moved to Largo in September 1989 and discovered St. Paul United Methodist Church on the first Sunday of 1990. I was immediately hooked on that church and knew it was the place I wanted to establish my religious roots. Little did I know at the time I chose St. Paul that this place would reintroduce me to the special needs community. I will always remember that special Sunday in 1994 when our church welcomed a group from Barrie, Ontario in Canada, a group that called itself the Handicapable Ministry. Its leader was a minister by the name of Bill Fritz. Bill had been to our church before. He and our senior pastor, Dr. Tom Farmer, used to exchange pulpits on an annual basis. This Sunday, Bill brought a large contingent of his handicapable ministry to be a part of the worship service. Their role was to sing at the service. It was like listening to music from heaven. Chill bumps were present on my arms as I listened in awe. What an amazing experience. It had been 13 years since I had last seen a developmentally disabled adult. It was as if everything had come full circle from my first experience of meeting an autistic young man. Surely, God had big plans for inserting me into serving in some useful capacity at this wonderful church called St. Paul United Methodist Church. Now, next week, we're going to get into the second chapter, and that's Bill Fritz's arrival here at St. Paul Church. These little clippets will range from anywhere from two to four minutes every single week. It'll give you a little bit of background. Now, one day I'm working with some publishers right now to try to find one that's going to be in a position to publish our book. I'll have more information as I gather more information of when that may possibly be. It's not going to happen the next week or so, but we hope that it's going to happen uh, within some time this year. All right, here we go with our handy spotlight. I'm taking you back in years some of the times because some of the handy spotlights, we want to be able to remember some of the things that we've done. Now, there were not too many of you who were present for the very first annual talent show that we had back in 1998. You can see there on the little uh, podium that we had, it shows a little sign that says the first annual Handicapable Talent Show. And we had four 
of special acts. There were actually more than four, but one of the ones was Andy. And Andy came and he had all different type of sounds. And he, the best one was his turkey call. Oh, how we loved, we hooted and howled when he did his turkey call. And then we had Diane. Diane was a wonderful storyteller that came and told us different type of stories. We were all sitting on the edge of our seats. And I was trying to think, we probably had about 30 people or 35 that were actually at our first annual talent show. And when you think today when we've had talent shows that we've had over 150 people that attend and we usually have 45 people that have different type of acts that participate in. Also, you'll notice Andrea, that was, uh, gosh, back in 98, that was many, many years ago, and she played the electric piano, and we love to hear her play the electric piano. And one of the greatest events that we had <laughs> was the time when Ha came and impersonated Barbara Streisand. That brought the house down. Wonderful, wonderful memories. All of you who were part of that, We'll always keep you in our memory banks, and thank you for being such a big part of starting that off. And every year, with the exception of last year, due to the pandemic, because we could not have any in-person gatherings, we have had handicapable talent shows. All right, it's time for prayer time. We always remember one of the things that's so important to us, the fact that Jesus says in his scripture, Matthew 28, verse 20, he says, Surely I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Our special prayer request we're going to be lifting up tonight is Crossroads Group Home. Crossroads has come to us. They've been a wonderful part of our ministry, and we're just so thankful for all that they've been able to do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather once again, it's such a wonderful time to gather and to think back. Think back like we did with our talent show, the very first one that we had. To see pictures and relive some of those wonderful memories when we started our ministry. And one of the people that started with our ministry in the very early stage was Crossroad Group, group Homes. It's a group of uh, six group homes that are located in Seminole, where Renee and I live. And, oh, Father, we just appreciate their faithfulness in being able to come and be a part of our ministry for years and years and participate in so many different ways. Oh, Father, as you know, they participate in our talent show. They participate in Special Olympics. They're always faithfully in coming to our worship services to uh, our craft nights that we have, all the different activities, social activities that we have. Oh, Father, we're just so thankful for Crossroads, and we're thankful for every single person, every single parent, uh, volunteers, uh, companions, and other group home and group home leaders, oh, Father, that make up this ministry. Continue to pour your blessings on all of us, oh, Father, and may we strive to be disciples and followers of you and do those things that you want us to do. I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, now we've been on a study about studying some of the miracles of Jesus. Now, last week, and we know that Jesus performed 37 miracles. I'm not saying we're going to cover them all. We're going to cover several of them. Last week, we looked at the second miracle where Jesus heals a royal officer's son at Capernaum in uh, Galilee. And you remember the story, Al, that the nobleman or the royal officer came to a place where Jesus was. He didn't invite Jesus to come to him. He went to Jesus, which is a good sign for all of us. And the nobleman believed so much in Jesus, he made Jesus aware of what was happening at home. He said, Jesus, my son is ill, and I'm asking you to bring healing to him. And Jesus was so impressed with this man's confidence and this faith in Jesus. He said, listen, you can go home, your son is healed. And so the nobleman did return home. And when he got home, even before he got home, his servants came to tell him that his son had been healed. Tonight, we're going to be looking at from Luke 5, verses 12 through 13. It's a story about the healing of the man with the leprosy. Let's see what it says in Scripture. And this is where Jesus is out there. A leper comes and approaches Jesus. And this is what the leper had to say. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. The Lord put out his hand and touched him. And the Lord said, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him. That's a powerful message in that, isn't it? It surely is. Now listen, I want to do this. I want to look at this seventh miracle of Jesus and find out a little bit more about the man who had leprosy. There were two types of leprosy during the days of Jesus. One was like a very bad skin disease 
Probably most of us at some time of others had a skin disease. Some of us suffer from psoriasis and others get maybe a little skin infection and you have to scratch it and it turns red and maybe it starts to bleed a little bit and you put some type of ointment on it to heal it. But it's nothing that is life threatening. But in Jesus' time, not only did they have that type of leprosy, they also had one that would actually eat the flesh away. It would just start maybe possibly on the hand. And it would get so bad that actually you start losing your fingers. The next thing you'd lose your hand and it could just eat away at the total body. I mean, this was something that would be uh, very challenging to anyone and very frightening to anyone. And it was frightening to the community as well. Let's see what happened with people who had leprosy and how they were treated. First of all, they were isolated. They had to cry out, I am unclean. Let's just say that I was living back in Jesus' time and I had leprosy and I was going into a marketplace, a place where people were. I had to put those people on notice and say, I am unclean. So they were aware that I had leprosy and the people were going to be so afraid of me and frightened by me, they would scatter. They didn't want to get close. They were afraid just by being in my presence, they could actually get uh, leprosy. Another bad thing about having leprosy is that you would have to live alone. Let's say again that I lived back in the days of Jesus and that Renee lived back there with me and everything. But Renee and I had a wonderful home. But if I got leprosy, I was taken out of the home. I could not go back and be a part of a home where I had love and care and compassion. Another thing, you were totally just almost like banished from society. You know, when we had in-person uh, worship here at uh, St. Paul and we would all gather together as the family of God being the handicapped ministry. We'd gather together down in the fellowship hall. We would average over 175 that come each Wednesday. Evening. We all came in. That was our society. But if I were living back in the days of Jesus and we had a handicapped ministry at that time and I came in and I had to declare that I'm unclean, I would not be welcomed. Oh, that would just be terrible to not be welcomed. That was another uh, thing that I would have to have fought if I lived back in the days of Jesus. Another thing, I was actually exiled from home. That meant that I had no place that I could call my home because just about any place that I went, people would be recognizing that I was a leper because I'd have to declare that I'm unclean and then they would cause me to just have to go away or they would scatter and not be in my presence anymore. You know, it's the tremendous truth that is found with this because the leper actually came to Jesus. And Jesus did the uh, almost unbelievable. He actually reached out and touched the leper. And by so touching, the leper was healed. Can you imagine that? And the story that uh, I think that would have meaning to us is the fact that Jesus wants us to come to him. Regardless of how serious uh, sin we feel like that we may have committed or we've done something, that we should not have done, and we feel unclean, that we should come to Jesus. Jesus is always right there, and he will touch us and heal us and forgive us of our sins. And another thing, too, is the fact that we as a society, we should be doing the same thing. Other people, and a lot of times in the society we live in, we feel like that those people are not clean or whatever. We should not have any association with those types of people. We should try to have the loving care of Jesus and try to approach those that we may not think alike, we may not have the, the same type of home, other things that may be present in societal times right now, but we need to be loving like Jesus and go out and be willing to touch the untouchables that society may place in our past and try to ask for God to bring healing and comfort to all of those so we can work together as the family of God. You know, as Jesus' popularity continues to grow, uh, because many were desiring to seek, you know, to see people to be healed like the leper was being healed. They wanted to know more about uh, seeing miracles like the feeding of the 5,000. So his popularity continued to grow. But you know, one of the things that they continue to want to be and maybe bring their troubles to Jesus, but a lot of times they were not and we are not at times willing to follow his demands. And his demands are we're supposed to be and live like disciples of Jesus, be the followers of Jesus. So we don't 
want to just be willing to call on Jesus in our time of need, but we need to be out there constantly in the community, being a follower and trying to make disciples of other people. So does it apply to us in today's time about the leper? Absolutely it does. We need to know about what Jesus' words are and follow his commands, not just look and seek for healing, times when we have uh, healing needs in our family, but also to know that we're supposed to go out there, be among the people and reach those that would be considered untouchable. Are we making disciples of Jesus? You better believe that we are. We're striving to do that, and that's just Jesus' command. That's the purpose that we'll put here on this earth, is not to make the most money in the world, but it's to try to go out there, be among the people, bring them salvation, let them be aware that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and just by declaring Him as our Lord and Savior, and believing He is the Son of God, and asking for forgiveness of our sins, and declaring that we're willing to follow Him, we can reach salvation. Jesus is the light of the world. This is another one of those that uh, we have as a part of our lessons, the open arms of Jesus. We're inclusive. We invite all to be a part of our handicapped ministry. And we've got uh, Bill Fritz right there, who is a shining example of being the light of uh, the Jesus in the world. And he's got a bear hug on Sherry right there. Bill, we appreciate so much your faithfulness and being able to be a part of our ministry. Even though that you have stepped down from the capacity as being the leader, uh, gosh, it's been several years ago, actually in 2002. Been an inspiration to others. Dawn has been an inspiration to us for years and years. That's a picture of Dawn and her mother, Linda. They're actually members of another church, but they've been attending St. Paul Church. And one of the things that's so inspirational about uh, Dawn is the fact that she loves to take little cars and she sends little encouraging words on those cars and mails them to different people, people in her church and the different members of the handicapped ministry here, right here at the church. Dawn, you're a wonderful example, you and your mother both. We love you dearly. And uh, remember, follow Jesus, read, believe, and act on His Word, and pray for strength and guidance. And also, don't forget next week coming up on May the 5th, we'll be looking at Chapter 2, Bill Fritz's arrival at St. Paul Church. And also, don't forget, invite your friends to come and be a part of our handicapable uh, worship services on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and uh, sign up, subscribe. Another thing, you're going to learn the story. If you continue to watch on a weekly basis, you'll learn the whole story and what Handicap has been able to accomplish in all these 23 years of being there. We love you with the love of the, God, the Lord. Be safe out there. And remember, God loves us more than we could ever imagine. We'll see you next week. And God bless. <laughs>